Our final topic on solutions for right now is Beer-Lambert's Law. This law allows us to measure and compare concentrations of solutions. Our learning objective is to explain how it allows us to do that, and our two pieces of essential knowledge are to be able to use an equation to calculate that and to be able to explain the relationship between the absorption of light and the concentration of a solution. This is really only going to apply to solutions that have a color to them. So we can't use this with solutions like sugar water and salt water. When a solution has a color, the more concentrated it is, the deeper the color is. So in this picture, on the left, we have a pretty dilute sample and the color is not very deep. But on the right, we have a much more concentrated solution and the color is much more deep. We can measure the concentration by shining a light through the solution and measuring how much light hits a sensor. If a lot of light shines through that solution, then we know that it's not very concentrated. If not very much passes all the way through and hits that sensor, then we know that it's more concentrated. That's because as the light passes through the solution, the little particles of solute will scatter and disperse the light. So if there's a lot of particles, then these beams are really going to get knocked around and they're not going to make their way through to the other side. But if there aren't very many particles, then a lot of the light makes its way through and it hits the sensor. There is a formula that relates all of this. And this formula is on your formula sheet and you should be able to use it if you are given a problem that tells you something about absorption, something about the molar constant, and something about the path length, you should be able to plug those variables in and pop out a concentration. The path length is the size of the container. So this is a pretty big path length. If we had a smaller path length, then more light would be able to shine through because if we have a smaller container, of course, there would just naturally be fewer particles in there, even if we had a very concentrated solution. So that path length makes a difference. This um, constant is a constant that's very specific to the solution. So that's something that you would have to be given or you'd have to look up in a table or something like that. What's more common is to be given data where someone has measured the concentration for samples of a solution of known concentration. So sample one had this concentration and that was the absorption. And then there was sample two that had a different concentration and a different absorption. And sample three and sample four. And it might be in a chart where you can see a pattern or it might be graphed and there's a line. And then you could be given a sample of unknown concentration where you could look to see where it falls in the chart or if it's a graph, you could use the line to kind of determine what the concentration would be. So if you know that the unknown sample had this absorption, you could go over to the line and then down to see what that concentration is. This particular graph, of course, has no numbers on it, so not super helpful. But here's a graph that does have numbers. So in this particular case, if we knew that our absorption was, say, 1.4, and we could go over to our line, go down to our concentration, and see that our concentration was maybe 1.7 or so. So that's how that's used. And that's a pretty common way that this law is applied, so that we, we have some standards and then we can take this unknown and see where it fits in with the standard.